there. Let's talk about recognition for your event. There are many ways to recognize your scouts, whether it be a normal trophy, uh, it can be different sizes, different form factors, different materials, uh, but it doesn't have to be a trophy at all. It could be a medal, it could be a patch, even a ribbon. And of course, there's the normal certificate that many, many scouts have received over the years. Now, one of the problems with trophies is that they tend to be expensive. Um, but it turns out that you don't have to have a store-bought trophy to recognize your scouts. You can actually do a homemade trophy. These are two examples of trophies that my scouts have won over the years. And it turns out that these are actually the favorite ones of all of the ones that they've received. So this actually is something I'm going to show you guys how to do in a minute. Uh, when it comes to the patches, this is often something that's given to all of the scouts that are participating, whether it's for the Ringo to Regatta, Pinewood Derby. Notice that this one's already got a loop on it. This makes it easy for them to wear it on their uniform as a temporary patch. Uh, this one you would have to add that to if you were going to wear that on their patch. Uh, this is another uh, way of giving recognition to all your scouts is through ribbons. These are really easy and they're inexpensive. Certificates. This is a really, really good way to spread around some of the recognition during your event. So while not everybody can get first, second, or third place for their den or for the overall event, you can get really creative when it comes to your certificates. So think of ways of recognizing your scouts, whether they have the most creative car or the most patriotic car. Uh, maybe there's another theme that you guys are going with that you want to be able to recognize scouts for. This is really a good way that you can give more and more awards to your scouts. Uh, so get really creative with these. Think of really cute ideas of how you can actually do that. All right, I'm going to reposition the camera and we're going to come right back and I'm going to show you how to build one of these trophies for your event. So stay tuned. All right, we're back. First things first, safety, of course. So I'm going to put on my safety glasses. So now we are going to make our very own trophy. So here was the example of one I showed you that my boys won uh, during their very first Pinewood Derby. It's very simple to make. It uses scrap woods that you might have laying around the house. So here's some wood that I happen to have uh, just laying around. So I was able to cut that. And as you can see from these pieces here, you can use it to make different size trophies. So imagine that this is going to be our first, our second, and our third place trophies. And you can use different materials for the base as well. So here you can see I have two different base materials. So these I cut down and I've got this guy here. Different thicknesses work well also. So you're gonna need materials for your base. You're gonna need materials for your columns. You're gonna need a topper of some sort, like a race car. Um, or if you're not even doing the columns, you can get creative with those and even use dollar store items like these. So um, it's really very simple to do. And then for the numbers, if you happen to know somebody who has a vinyl cutter, like a Cree cut, you can get them to cut the numbers out for you. And you can just place those right on to your finished piece. So we're going to set this aside. Um, I'm using this block of wood so that when I'm drilling, I have something to drill into so I don't damage my work surface. And then when you're screwing everything together, um, you're going to want to make sure that you make pilot holes. So that's why I've got my drill here for my pilot holes. And if you can, you can countersink those so that when uh, you screw in the screw that it doesn't protrude from the bottom at all. And then when you're finally ready, you can screw those in with a, just a regular old screwdriver. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is select your base. And in this particular case, I've already gone ahead and figured out where my center line is. And that's really just connecting the four corners and figuring out where the middle is. So let's go ahead and drill a hole right through our base. So we line it up right there in the center. There's your hole, comes out the other side. And now you're gonna need to do the same thing with your column. So if we look at our column here, I've already drawn the lines for that one as well. And we're gonna go ahead and drill that the same way that we just did the base. So right through the center. All right, so now we have our base, we have our column. Now, like I said, if you have the ability to do so, we're going to go ahead and countersink our hole. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out my bits here. All right, so let's go ahead and countersink that. All right, so let's go ahead and get our screw started. So I've got a screw here. 
Now, when you're screwing these in, like I said, if it's hard for you to screw, one little trick is to take some paste finishing wax that you would use on furniture, and you can run that right along the threads. If you don't have any finishing wax, you can actually do this with a bar of soap as well. And you just run those threads right along the soap, and it'll make it a lot easier to screw those in. So let's go ahead and get this started. Now the reason that you want to make sure that you do a pilot hole is so that you don't split your wood. Because if you don't have a pilot hole, it's going to one, make it a lot harder to screw in, and two, it's going to make it a lot more likely that you're going to end up cutting right through. Now the other thing that you would do here if you were actually doing this as your final step is I would actually add a little bit of wood glue right here on your base. Or if you don't have wood glue, you can actually use just regular old white Elmer's glue if you have that. And that'll just help things hold together a little bit better. And then we're going to go ahead right here and screw that in. And because we countersunk it, it's not protruding from the bottom. So we get that all straightened out there. And now we've got our little tower. Now you can straighten that up a little bit more, and if this were being glued, that glue would set up and then you would have a very nice strong base. Now, I'm not going to do that for this video, but what you would do at this point is you would go ahead and spray paint this. Uh, whatever color you want, you can go with the traditional gold, silver, and bronze if you want for the actual trophies. You can use any other colors that you want, just like we had with our blue one here, and just then paint the different items that go on it the different colors. Then the other thing that you would want to do is get the pocket car or whatever topper that you're going to use on this prepared at the same time. Now once those are spray painted, you might put your letters on at this point. You have your topper ready. All you have to do is to put the topper onto this is use your hot glue gun. Um, I don't have my hot glue gun set up here, but it's really easy. You would let it warm up. You would put a nice big dab of, of hot glue right there on the bottom of that car. You pop that right back on top of that, make sure it sets, and then you would have your nice trophy built out of scraps that you probably already have laying around your garage or probably have friends that have those scraps that you can develop. So this is a really, really good way of creating a trophy that your scouts are actually going to like a lot more in many cases than the ones that you're going to buy from the store. So get creative. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get recognition for your scouts. Uh, the key here is, is that you want your scouts to all have fun and enjoy what they're doing.